special day that the Lord has made. I don't know what is eating you up. I don't know what is holding you down spiritually. But I believe after our sermons today that God is going to bless you spiritually, physically, and emotionally. God has a wonderful plan for us. God says the plan I have for you is for good and for not for evil. To bring all of us to an expected end. And there's a special mandate God has given to us at the AG Church Online. One of those mandates is to reach out to the world through the net. We believe that the internet is one of the biggest church online. And we are going to approximate it to the glory of God by spreading the gospel there. So today, as you listen to us, I believe that God is going to meet you at the point of your needs. God has a special package for you. Thank you so much as you spend time with us in the next 20 or 25 minutes in listening to the word of God. I want us to pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence once more. As we explain your word, O oh God, let this world bear fruit in the lives of all our listeners. As we explain your word, O oh God, every sickness, every body may be healed and may be lifted off their shoulders. Receive all glory and honor. Unto thy own name, O oh God, be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has mandated me this afternoon to talk to you on a topic I titled Respecting the Growth and Maturity of Our Youth. You see, one of the biggest challenges we have in this world, particularly in this our client, is not knowing when that young man that is seated beside you, that little boy that you have taken out from his father's house, as your apprentice, you don't know when he has become a man and how to relate with him as a man. One of the biggest challenges our young people have is being unappreciated by our elders when they are supposed to be appreciated. Our father still believes that we remain a child. Everly remains a child. We don't know when the man in the child begins to talk so that we can relate with them. And it has been a very big source of worry, not just in the church, but in the society at large. And God has given us an insight into his word on how best to handle this and one of the benefits of handling it. So as we extract the word of God this afternoon on this topic, I know that God is going to richly bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to take, I want to take you to a very special place in the scripture. God opened my eyes when I was reading that portion of the scripture, the book of Genesis, chapter 13 from verse 1 to 9. If you have your Bible, you can open it with me as we read. The Bible says, So they left Egypt and traveled not into the Negai, Abram with his wife and Lot, and all that they owned. For Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver and gold. Then they continued traveling by stages towards Bethel, to the place where Bethel and I, where they, where they had camped before. This was the place where Abraham had built the altar, and there he again worshipped the Lord. Now Lot was traveling with Abraham, was also very wealthy with sheep, cattle, and many tents. But the land could not support both Abraham and Lot with all their flocks, and herds living so close together. There were too many animals for the available pasture land, so an argument broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. At that time, Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land. This is where God spoke to me from. Look at what verse 8 says. Then Abram talked it over with Lot. This arguing between our herdsmen has got to stop, he said. After all, we are close relatives. Some scripture says, after all, we are brothers. After all, we are brothers. I tell you what we will do. Take choice of any section of the land you want, and we will separate. 
if you want that area over there, then I will stay here. If you want to stay in this area, then I will move on to another. Praise the Lord. What Abraham did here is something that the lawyer spoke to me about. About our today bosses, about our today employers, about our today uncles, about our today masters, the way they relate with their servants. Every servant will never remain a servant forever. Every young man will never remain a young man forever. There is a reason why any animal or human being who eats grows. They grow in their thinking, in their intellectual capacity, they grow in their ability to make opinion about themselves. They have decisions concerning their lives. How do you welcome their decisions? How do you appreciate that this man is no longer a boy? How do you recognize that this boy has grown? He's no longer a child. He's no longer that small John that is in your house. Let us look at what this scripture is talking about. Who is Lot? And who is Abraham? The Bible said that when God told Abraham to move to a land he will show him, flowing with milk and honey, Abraham left with three persons. Abraham left with his wife, some of his servants. Particularly, the scripture was particular about Lot. Abraham left with Lot, his little cousin. He was his younger brother by all standard. In fact, the entire life of Lot, Abraham trained him from childhood up to the day he became a man. But while he was with Abraham, the Bible recognized here that he has garnered so much wealth. Every grace of blessing that Abraham carried, Lot enjoyed it. He had so much wealth in sheep, he was aware that he had his own herdsmen living in the same house with Abraham, and conflict broke out. Abraham would have said, how dare you? How dare you allow your herdsmen to confront my herdsmen? Some masters will not tolerate what herdsmen of Lot did, but there was wisdom in what Abraham did. It was a kind of wisdom that God was watching to see how Abraham will handle it. The biggest challenge we have here in our generation is that our fathers believe that our young ones are still small in their eyes. Oh, fathers, God is trying to tell you today that even you were once a child. You will not be happy when someone denigrates you or ridicule you because of the fact that the person wants be is your boss. You must realize, that boss needs to realize the, 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 the time frame when the younger one begins to migrate to adulthood. That is what God wants us to understand this afternoon. That is the message God wants us to understand. Now look at it by all standard. A man who trained you, a man who brought you up from your father's house, a man who made you who you are, a man who sponsored your education, who always want to see as his boy, who always want to see as a child, who always wants to see you to be subservient to every of his opinion, who always wants to subjugate every of your opinion, subject to his own will. But God has not created man like that. God created man to grow. This is one of the biggest challenges we are having in our families. A lot of homes have been destroyed. Where the person who is the elder holds on to his pride of eldership. How dare you speak to me in that manner? Abraham did not want that to destroy his family. Abraham understood the bond of brotherhood. That is why Abraham said to Lot, let us talk it over. God is saying to all our fathers, God is saying to all our younger ones, Always have in your heart that the bonds of brotherhood matter so much. Always create room so that you can talk it over. God loves man so much. Okay, look at this. Jesus understood his place as a king. He understood his place as a savior. He understood his divinity as God. Even while he was with his disciples, at a point in time in his ministry, he said to them, I no longer see you as a friend, as a brother. I no longer see you as my servant. I no longer see you as my disciples. Today I call you brother. There is a reason why Jesus went to that extent of upgrading Peter and his call to the level of brotherhood. Because having trained them to an extent, they are beginning to grow and become a matured man. No matured man, no matter how small he is in your eyes, 
will appreciate anybody talking him down, even when he has a family of his own. The place we read in the scripture is very instructive. What did Abraham do? What was he trying to avoid? Conflict arising between the elder one and the younger one. He needed to understand that Lot was no longer the Lot that he took out from or of child. Lot was no longer that little boy that served him, went to fetch firewood for him. Lot was now a full grown man. The Bible did not just say he's a man, say he's a wealthy man. The Bible did not just say he's a wealthy man, he's a man with so many employees under him who he pays salary. So many headsmen who were ready to die for their master ships. But yet, that their master was a younger one, the almighty Abraham. Abraham had every right whatsoever to say, I am the elder. Abraham did not regard the difference in age between him and Lot. Abraham did not regard his right to have chosen first. But what Abraham was concerned with, which is what every child of God should be concerned with, is the peace of the house. Is the peace. He had to allow his right to go so that his bond of brotherhood will be restored. So that his peace with Lord, his brother, and his peace with his maker will remain. How do you value your relationship with your brothers? How do you respect them when growth begins to call on them? Thank you.